Hi, I'm Maya Louise Fitzpatrick. This is my new novel on Midnight Beach. It's set in Donegal in the long hot summer of 1976. On Midnight Beach is based on a legend, an Irish legend, the story of Cú Cullen. Cú Cullen's like our Hercules. Um, and in my book, I've reimagined him as a 17 year old living in a small fishing village and he's very charismatic, he's really talented and he's a bit of a lone wolf but he's um, he's the kind of guy that just can't turn away from a fight. I've tried to see the story more from a female point of view by bringing in Emer as the main voice. Emer is in the original legend she's the wife of Cucullin, so here she's Dog's girlfriend. And I suppose I'm trying to look at the whole idea of violence and all our legends are full of, of death and killing. Why do we think it's heroic to kill somebody? Emer watching and not liking the violence that she sees in Dog even though she's in love with them. My Cucullin is called Dog Cullen and he lives in Carrick Cove, a little fishing village. Uh, and across the bay, there's Ross, the rival town. And, you know, it's that kind of rivalry that small towns have with their neighbouring town. And that thing that is just generations built in hatred for no particular reason other than we're us and they're them. Um, but when a dolphin swims into the bay and adopts Carrick Cove as its new home uh, and Carrick Cove starts to build a tourist industry around it and draw the tourists away from Posh Ross. It sets up a real reason for their rivalry and something to actually go to battle over. The story is set in 1976, which is a legendary summer. It was incredibly hot all across Europe and even Ireland had you know its highest ever temperatures and it was this long spell of summer weather the kind of summers that well we only dream about in Ireland um, so everybody remembers it and the reason that I set it then is well a few reasons that's when I was a teenager so it was kind of easy to get inside the skin of my teenage self and and write teenagers from that point of view, particularly since it was, it's my first time writing a love story because ultimately it is a love story. Um, I just felt more comfortable trying to write it from a familiar point of view for me. Um, a really practical reason for setting it in the 70s is no mobile phones, no computers, no internet. They can really cause issues when you're writing a story. You know, why doesn't he just ring and say they're coming to kidnap your dolphin? I'm going to read you a little piece from it. Uh, Emer, the main character, is about to climb out her bedroom window and go swimming with Rin, the dolphin. I hadn't expected love to turn up this summer. I hadn't bargained for a dolphin in the bay, for endless sunshine, more sun than any of us had ever seen before, brown skin, more skin than any of us had ever seen before. And night swimming. I hadn't bargained on night swimming. I'd never imagined myself climbing out my window at midnight, lying in a boy's arms on the sand in the dark. These last few weeks, I hadn't given a thought to next year or any year other than this year, this summer, this moment, right now. Lying in bed that night, I realised I'd stopped daydreaming about going to college because going to college would mean separation from dog. Are you really going to trade in your big plans for some boy, Emer Monaghan, I thought. Is that who you really are now? Well, it didn't matter if it was because it was most likely over. Fee was right. Doug was proud. He'd come to apologise this morning and I hadn't let him. He wouldn't come again. Doug and I were through. But that didn't mean I had to give up a in too. I looked at my watch. It was one o'clock. If Doug and Kit had gone swimming, they'd gone home by now. I rolled upright, grabbed my towel and slipped through the window into the yard. When I got to the beach, I looked around to make sure I had the place to myself. The moon was bright. I didn't have to wait for my eyes to adjust to the darkness. I shed my clothes and walked into the sea. Rin was there already, waiting. He whistled his usual greeting and then he was quiet as he always was with me. We swam together and when I stopped, he stopped and let me come close. Close enough to touch him. 
I knew I shouldn't, I knew it was a daft thing to do. If he reacted badly, lashed out, I was alone. There was no one to help me. But I knew, thought I knew, it'd be all right, so I reached out. For a heart-stopping moment, I ran my fingers gently over his nose, his face, and Rin and me, we held each other's eye. He made a low buzzing sound like a cat's rumbling purr. I felt it vibrate through my fingers and up my arm. And then he turned, dived and was gone. I waded back to the shore with that touch singing on my palm. A fierce joy surged through me. I felt as if I'd spoken to the ocean itself and in response, it had called my name. Uh, I'm a writer and an illustrator, so I'm going to draw you one of the main characters in the book, who is Rin, a dolphin. So there you go, Rin, the dolphin, from On Midnight Beach. Hi, so I'm going to give you a plotting exercise. So you're going to take your favourite legend, myth or fairy tale and you're going to reset it in contemporary times with teenage protagonists. So the first thing you're going to do is take your story and make a list of the characters that are in it and then decide who you can lose and who you can keep. Uh, often there are loads of extra characters in these stories and you can often get rid of a few of them or a lot of them. Um, and then decide in their names, decide if they need new names. Sometimes the names just aren't going to fit a contemporary situation so rename them. And then two lines. One is just a sentence describing their main personality traits as they would fit today and would fit a teenager and then their background again as it would fit today and would fit a teenager and then you're going to choose your setting look at the setting that belonged to originally and now reset it and you can go for comedic effect and completely blow the setting out of the water or go for a dramatic effect, whatever suits. So, you know, decide it's going to be set in a school, it's going to be set in a summer camp, it's going to be set in a mall where a whole load of the teenagers work, a restaurant that they all work in, or, you know, a city or whatever. Choose your setting. And then you're going to get a big sheet of paper and draw a line down the middle of it. And on one side, you're going to write the main plot point so it's a bullet point the plot of the original story just bullet point all the way down and then again look at it and see what what you're going to keep and what you're going to lose because again sometimes the legends go off on tangents and you don't necessarily need to go with them so choose and lose what you're going to keep what you're going to translate and then on the other side decide how you can tell that same story in this new setting with these teenagers, what's going to change? How's it going to work out? Again, bullet pointed. So you're plotting rather than actually going ahead and writing the story. And the other thing that I need you to do is just look at the magical elements because all of these stories have magical elements. Are you going to keep that magical element or are you going to go completely realistic? and you know ditch the magical and then how are you going to make it work or are you going to keep the magical element and how are you going to make that work okay i hope you enjoy it cheers so my favorite breakfast is french toast i get it and i'm out and i love my fresh home as well Just egg and any kind of milk beat it up oops sorry about that <laughs> And then, and then you're going to cut yourself some bread and dump it into the eggy mixture and turn it over when it's soaked up on one side. And there we 
go. We'll leave that for a few minutes. So I'm um, just bread's nice and soaked. I'm just about to dump it into the frying pan. Hopefully it's gonna sizzle. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and that's gonna take a couple of minutes on both sides. And then be ready for breakfast. So I'm gonna turn it. And then it's on the other side. Okay, we're ready to put it together. Yeah. There we go. I've got some fruit on it. That's what I like. And then I sometimes go for maple syrup, but you're my big excuse to uh, go with some of this posh Nutella, as I call it. It's uh, less sugar and no palm oil. And that's my favorite breakfast. You caught me.